Gift. There were two brothers, Hira Herman and Jorah George. Hira studied in the fifth grade and Jorah in the third. One day an uncle came to visit them. He gave Hira a cool hiking knife. This knife was quite large, and he also had a scabbard. My uncle gave Jorah an army flask. Also good, of course, but a knife is better. Hira has never parted with his knife since then. I even went to school with him. Once I couldn't resist and showed the knife to my classmates. The teacher was told she ordered Hira not to go to school with the gun anymore. After that, Hira simply hid the knife in the bottom of his backpack and did not show it to anyone. Jora wakes up in the morning, looks and their room is covered in blood. He shakes his brother awake, asks what it is, but Hira didn't say anything. I just took a rag and washed the floor. And Jora asked him not to say anything to his mother. Since then, Hira has been kind of weird. He sometimes disappeared somewhere, and then appeared stained with blood. He was not happy, but he didn't tell Jora anything. One afternoon at school, Jora found out that brother Hira had been attacked. Some girl, whom no one knew, looked into the classroom in the middle of the lesson and said that the director was asking Hira to come to her office urgently. The teacher let him go, she couldn't disobey the director, and at recess, Hira was found in the corridor. He was lying in a pool of his own blood, all beaten up with broken bones. In the evening, Jora came to visit his brother in the hospital. Hira felt very bad. He asked for his favorite knife to be brought to him, and he added in a whisper otherwise. I will not live. Jora rushed home. In the afternoon, he brought two backpacks from school, his own and his brother's. And so I took a knife out of the second backpack and rushed to the hospital. But Hira is already dead. Jora knew how much his brother loved his knife. Therefore, he quietly put a knife in the coffin. So they buried him. And a few days later, he wakes up in the morning. Looks and on his brother's former bed lies the same knife. What is it? Jora picked up a knife. Maybe it's another knife. No, this is the one. Here's another letter G scrawled. Probably. It was mom or dad who found the knife in the coffin, took it out, and now they gave it to Jora. He decided that the knife should stay with his brother. I went to the cemetery just to bury him. In the ground there, he comes to the gate, and there's a little red-haired girl, says, don't do it. You'll need the knife again. Jora obeyed, and correctly, in the evening, some criminal attacked him at the entrance. Of all the clothes on the criminal were only blue pants, there were not even shoes. The whole body is covered in tattoos, and Jora just had a knife in her bosom. He took it out and began to defend himself. Several times he hit the criminal with a knife, he roared with anger and ran away. There was a lot of blood on the floor. It turns out that Hero was also attacked by this criminal, he just didn't confess. The next day, a girl looked into the classroom where Jora studied. She said that the director asked Jora to come to her office urgently. Jora slipped the knife under his jacket and went out, and then three criminals attacked him. At once, they looked like brothers to each other in blue pants, tattoos. The girl also attacked, she was a criminal in disguise, only of small stature. Jora was ready, he pulled out the knife and began to defend himself. Nothing worked out for the criminals. Wounded, they ran away. Now the whole corridor was covered in blood, since then, Jora has never parted with a knife for a minute. These criminals attacked rarely, but unexpectedly. Then a hatch will open in the elevator from above and a criminal will crawl through it. Then in the toilet from the next stall. Then a tattooed hand will stick out of the sand. On the beach, then two men will come to visit. As if they are distant relatives and came to visit a second cousin nephew, Jora was very tired. Of them, once again, when he was caught the criminal changed into clothes like his mother's. Put on makeup like a woman and rang the doorbell. Jora put a knife to the man's throat and asked, What do you want from me? We need a knife. Why, it's a ritual knife. We need it to summon the fly Agaric god. Take your knife and get rid of me at last. It turned out that these were not criminals, but sectarians. The boy's uncle was just a criminal. He stole a knife from the cultists on the train when he was returning from the zone, and then gave it to Hira. The red-haired girl from the cemetery was the caretaker's daughter. She could talk to the dead. 
Here I asked her to give this knife to her brother so that he could defend himself from sectarians. Here I also did not know that the cultists were hunting for a knife, and not for children. And Jorah, by the way, was immediately killed as soon as he handed over the knife. It's just that no one should know about the fly agaric god and the ritual knife used to cut off the holy mushroom on the red full moon. Hands. The girl Sonia together with her mother somehow went to another city to visit her dad. This dad was serving his sentence in the zone he crushed a man to death a year ago. And then also fled the scene of the crime. That's why he was put in prison. We arrived in another city. Settled there in a hotel. We spent one night. In the morning, mom went on a date. She did not take Sonia with her. She was left alone in the room. Sonia is lying on the bed, watching TV which was hanging on the wall opposite, switches channels. Then something touched her leg. Sonia threw off the blanket, looks, the hand. And this hand came out from somewhere under the bed. Sonia was so scared that she didn't even scream. She flew to the bathroom in one leap, jumped into it and closed from the inside. She didn't think to turn on the light, and the switch was outside. I had to sit in complete darkness. Sonia huddled in the farthest corner of the bathroom, where the shower is, sitting, hugging his knees, trembling. And then that same hand touched Sonia's face directly. Sonia felt the smell of tobacco that came from this hand. Then the hand slightly squeezed the throat, as if it was going to strangle. Sonia screamed and jumped out of the bathroom. She grabbed a large knife that was lying on the table. Together with him, she climbed onto the table, from the table to the low cabinet. From the low cabinet she moved to the high one. I got ready to defend myself. But again this hand appeared unexpectedly. From behind, she touched Sonia's leg. Sonia turned around, slashed at this hand with a knife. The hand was thin, easily cut off. Just then mom came. She strictly ordered me to get off the closet. Sonia began to tell about the long arm, but her mother did not believe her. The girl then began to look for the severed hand, but it was also nowhere to be found. It was just lying on the closet, and now it's gone. So mom didn't believe Sonia. They had to stay another day. Mom didn't get to see dad. There was some kind of check in the zone. Everyone was on their ears today. They told me to come back tomorrow. In the evening, mom and Sonia went for a walk. Down in the lobby of the hotel, they met a very strange man. He was as tall as Sonia wrapped in some kind of rag, like a Hindu. This man looked at Sonia very angrily. Mom, I'm afraid of him. Sonia clung to her mother in fright. Don't be afraid of him. The hotel employee said, This is our employee, the watchman. He is disabled. He has no hands at all. He's a very good man. We walked around the city, went to the park. They're back, went to bed. In the middle of the night, Sonia woke up, feels something is wrong. The room was quite bright, so she noticed that her blanket had changed color. It used to be white, but now it has become black. Sonia remembered exactly that she was covered with a white blanket. Maybe mom changed it, then Sonia's left hand began to itch. Sonia scratched her, then the right hand, and I scratched her. Then my feet began to itch, then the stomach, then the back, then the head. My whole body itched. Sonia itches, itches, can't stop. It was a pity to wake my mother. Sonia thought she could handle it on her own. She went to the bathroom. There she undressed and stood in front of the mirror. The whole body was red, scratched. In some places even blood came out. And there were also a lot of small black dots on the body, as if someone had drawn them with a pen. Sonia thought a shower might help. She got under the water, turned it on hot. It became easier. But then the body began to itch with renewed vigor and some black threads began to come out of the black dots, and these threads were moving. Sonia already wanted to run to her mother, but then I noticed movement out of the corner of my eye. She raised her head and saw that a hand had come out of the ventilation hole, the same one again. This hand shook a finger at the girl. They say it's all your fault. Then she disappeared. Sonia never reached her mother. She died right there in the shower. In the morning, mom missed Sonia, started looking, went into the bathroom, and there was some furry animal lying on the floor. Mom didn't even recognize Sonia right away. 
the black blanket was gone, so no one would have found out what happened to Sonia if it hadn't been for that armless watchman. He got drunk and blabbed to a friend. It turns out that this watchman actually has hands, and very long, about 7 meters, but they can be stretched to 10 if necessary. It's just that this watchman has a rare disease since birth, and that's why his hands are boneless. When he was a boy, he trained his arms every day, stretched them. He dreamed of using his long arms to steal sweets from neighbors through the window. When he grew up, he moved to another city so that no one there would know about his hands. He pretended to be an armless invalid. In fact, he wrapped his hands around his torso and wrapped a rag on top so that it was not visible. The freak used his long arms to rob the residents of the hotel. He put his hands in the ventilation when no one was in the room, groped for money, equipment and jewelry. Sonia then cut off one of his hands, but the second one remained. With this second hand, the freak threw a black wool blanket into the room. This blanket was made from the wool of a black boar. When such wool gets on thin children's skin, it easily penetrates through it, and then also grows in the child's body, sucks out the juices. Toots. One girl had a birthday, this time, her parents prepared the best gift for her. They gave a big baby doll that looked just like a living child. The girl fell in love with this baby. She was constantly playing with him. She fed him with a spoon, put him to bed, even drove him down the street in a real baby carriage. Once she herself was carried in this stroller, now she was walking a baby in it. Walking down the street, women and grandmothers are touched. Wow, the girl's walking her little brother. It's just that the baby was like a real baby, and the girl dressed him in real children's clothes, which was given by a neighbor. It's just that this neighbor's baby has already grown up, so she shared old clothes. One thing upset the girl. Toots' eyes were closed, and she would so like to look into his eyes. The girl often thought but what kind of eyes does he have, maybe blue, or brown, or even green. Several months have passed. The girl began to notice that the clothes given by the neighbor stopped fitting on the baby. When she realized this, she was terribly happy, ran to share the news with her mother, mom. Mom, and Vladik is growing. What makes you think that his clothes stopped fitting on him? Come on, let me see. That's right, it doesn't fit. Strange. Maybe you washed it, so she sat down. No, I didn't wash it. It was Halloween soon. The girl invited three girlfriends home. They sat around a low coffee table, turned off the lights, lit candles. They began to guess and tell each other horror stories. The girl put a baby in a stroller. To the table, she wanted to. In the middle of one scary story, suddenly all four candles went out. It became dark, but then Toots opened his eyes. His eyes shone with a bluish light. Toots turned his head to the girl and said, Mama, I'm scared. The girls screamed and rushed out of the room. There were no adults at home. The girls wanted to jump out of the apartment too, but it was dark in the hallway. They began to flick switches, but the light did not come on. In the dark, the girls could not find their shoes and opened the door. Then Toots came out of the room with his burning eyes. Mama, I'm Hochukushet. The girls screamed again and hid in different corners of the apartment. Some time has passed. There was a slurping sound from one corner, then from the second one, from the third. The door of the closet in which the girl was hiding opened. Toots told her, Mama, I'm Hochu Kakat. The girl with trembling hands put the baby on the pot. Just then the parents came. They turned on the lights, and they saw that the whole apartment was covered in blood. And the baby is also smeared with blood all over. His eyes, by the way, were already closed. Dad immediately understood everything and said, I shouldn't have dug this baby out of the cemetery. I just decided to save money. I dug up a dead baby, painted it with paint so that you would think it was a real baby. We'll have to bury it back. 